Immediate analysis of the Jaguars pick in the third round. A live look inside the war rooms of Dave Caldwell and Doug Moreau. The Jaguars have made a selection in the third round. Defensive tackle Devon Hamilton from Ohio State is the selection. Welcome in. Full team coverage on Jaguars.com. J.P. Shadrick, Ashton Sullivan, Brian Sexton, John Osier, and our special guest back with us again. Mark Ellens, director of college scouting, gets us started here. Uh, Mark, this is another defensive lineman, a big stout player in the interior, and a guy who really, in his final year in Columbus, stepped up in a big way for the Buckeyes. Yeah, really came on his senior year, fifth-year guy, had a productive season for them on a really good defense, laden with a lot of talent. Uh, got better and better as the season went on. Uh, had a good senior bowl week. Um, so we see him as a good uh, interior defensive player for us. Ashley, go for it. Mark, at the scouting combine, he bench presses the most out of any defensive lineman, 33 reps. How big of a deal is that, and can that prove maybe he can stop the run coming in here? Um, definitely impressive that he put up that many reps, but not just uh, the amount of reps he can do, but he has functional strength on the field. That's where it's really important. So it matches up in both areas. John Osher. Mark, I say he had a pretty good uh, stats in terms of tackles for loss and sacks. Uh, he seems like he might be a little more than a run stuff for maybe able to penetrate a little bit. Yes. Uh, yeah, he's able to, to get up field, penetrate. He can also push the pocket with his strength and mass. Um, I, we don't see him as just a one-dimensional guy, but definitely uh, the, the run-stuffing part of, the, of his game is primary. Brian? There are so many defensive tackles, Mark, that are the uh, the underweight guys, the the 295-pound, tree technique, get-up-the-field kind of guys. This is the opposite, right? This is a throwback guy who can two-gap if you need him to, it appears. Yes. So, you know, the big thing coming in is we wanted to make sure in our division – playing the Titans, the Colts, and Houston, they want to run the ball. We had some issues with that last year, so we're trying to fortify the inside of our uh, interior defensive line. Mark Ellens with us, the director of college scouting. How about uh, when you visit with this guy and the, and the people in Columbus? Uh, he wasn't a huge prospect coming out of high school. I don't know if he was even a top 1,000 prospect, maybe a three-star, two-star, somewhere in that area. And he kind of worked his way into a role at Ohio State on a defensive line, mind you, Mark, obviously that has a lot of really good players on it over the years there. But the way he built his career in Columbus, what does that tell you as a, as a college scout? Well, it just shows you that the kid's committed to it. Um, he improved each year. Um, there's a maturation process in terms of his ability, not as a person, um, and then he just took ownership of being the starter this year and uh, became kind of a leader for him, more of a quieter kid at first, um, but started coming out of his shell and took on some leadership role uh, on that team. When you were in like the meetings with him, how many times did you guys visit with him or the coaches in, in Columbus and, and how did that equate and, and move forward? Sure. So we had multiple scouts going there in the fall, get the information from the uh, uh, football staff there. And then at the senior bowl, scouts met with him individually and then at the combine, our defensive line coaches met with him during the interview process. Good stuff. Brian, anything else? I, just overall, the defensive line, Mark, and that was such a big issue in the second half of last season. Can you address it enough? I mean, is this something you're still looking for guys in, inside that can, uh, that can provide you some depth? Yeah, I think so. I think um, we have a pretty good depth going here right now, especially with the signing of Gunter. Uh, we still have Avery. Um, Taven's coming along. Um, so we got some guys there. We also have some, uh, some depth. We have, we kept uh, Carlos Davis. So there's guys in there that we can rotate through. Oh, is there anything else? Yeah. I mean, it's, uh, you obviously see all the tape on these guys, Mark, how NFL ready is this guy? You would think with the depth situation that he needs to contribute right away. Yeah. I think he'll play in the rotation. Okay, so what about him? Right. Go ahead. I'm sorry. I, I think he'll play in the rotation right away. We can wave him through with Avery and the rest of those guys, keep everybody fresh. Probably also help with providing some pass rush out of him as well. Good stuff. Ashlyn, anything else? Mark, we know that this team has obviously a lot of draft picks, and they didn't address defensive line until right now. But do you and Coach Moore, I know he always talks about this, stopping the run, was that your guy's biggest priority, addressing that in this draft? I think that was definitely one of the things we were focused on. I think we also wanted to get a little bit stouter and thicker inside as well. Like I said, just because of the division we play in. Mm -hmm. All right, Mark, one final one here. And this may be above your pay grade, but 
Uh, are you guys done for the night? Or are there, are there more tricks up your sleeve this evening? Uh, as of right now, I think we're done, but you never know with Dave, so we'll see. <laughs> Good we definitely stuff. have ammunition to move up if we wanted to. There's no doubt about that. And if you don't use it, you're going to have a, a really busy day tomorrow. Mark, uh, thank you for the time. Congratulations, okay, Mark. Talk to you later. Thanks. Mark Allen, Thanks, joining Mark. Us, Director of College Scouting, joining us here on Jaguars.com. This is a presentation from Pepsi and Papa John's instant analysis of the defensive line pickup of Devon Hamilton from Ohio State. And Brian, uh, it's obvious we've talked about this all offseason, those five games where they gave up 200 yards rushing last year. It really it's kind of set the tone for this offseason. You can see that in some of the moves they've made already it, leading up to the draft. And certainly when it comes draft time, when you're starting to get more interior defensive line players. Well, we saw it last year. Uh, Avery Jones is not big enough to be a 30, 35 snap zero technique. He is really good in situational football. Yet if you ask him to anchor in there, play in and play out, he's going to get worn down. I, I see this move as the future at that zero technique. When you look at him and I'm watching him right now, this is a big, square-bodied man, a guy who can anchor with broad hips and broad shoulders. If you bench press 225 pounds 33 times, my guess is you're not going to wear down against the run in the NFL. <laughs> I like his chances to help them improve the uh, the run defense quickly. And by the way, that's not a slight on Avery. He's been in this league seven years. He came in as an undrafted. He's found a way to hang in the league. But he's not that big-bodied guy. And if you have him fresh, he gives you some pass rush, too. So this helps the Jaguars in a number of ways. Ashlyn, let's uh, touch a little bit on the, the two picks tonight overall. And have you been following the reaction? First off, you were you, you spoke with Chenault earlier, the wide receiver. Mm -hmm. What did you make of your conversation with him? And what has been the reaction, at least online, since uh, that pick and now the pick of Hamilton? Yes, that interview right now is up on Jaguars.com with the newest wide receiver. I have to say the thing that strikes out most about him is extremely confident. He said he compares himself to a trio of Julio Jones, Larry Fitzgerald, and Jarvis Landry. And I asked, I said, that's pretty confident, right? He goes, yeah, it's not cocky. I just know how good I am. So definitely confident. We talked to Keenan McCardle on this last show. Uh, I think he's going to come in here and impact right away. As of right now, the social reaction on Hamilton is, wow, what a big human. 320 pounds coming into Jacksonville. Also, four for four on commercial break. Fans are getting pretty upset by that, and I get it. Quit hating on Jacksonville, ABC. It's a tradition unlike any other uh, yeah. commercial break when the Jaguars are on the clock. It happens year after year. John, anything else we should know about Hamilton or the picks tonight? Uh, how satisfied are you with these two? Well, I think when you look at the draft in total so far, I thought they would go defensive tackle earlier. When Derek Brown wasn't there, they didn't. And then you wondered how they would sort of package this draft together in the first two days, which is your impact days usually, to stop the run better. Well, they kind of went about it in reverse, but I think the addition of uh, Chase Son in the first round, who is a better run player than Ngakwe. So I think they got better against the run on the edge. They've gotten Schobert, and they've gotten Hamilton. So – now that you can look at the first four picks, I think maybe they have taken a bigger step toward being a good run defense than you thought they had done after last night. So this is the plan. Brian, how about uh, moving forward to tomorrow? If, uh, as Mark Ellen said, Dave Caldwell uh, has all the cards, maybe slides back up. But if he does not, then it's a busy day at the office tomorrow. What's left on the agenda for this team? Quarterback, tight end, running back on the offensive side all seem to make sense. Um, you, we have not seen, other than Cole Komet, I, I don't believe, I'm looking here real quick, he's the only tight end who's been drafted. And there are a lot of the Hunter Bryant and the Harrison kid from Florida Atlantic, the 245-pound tweeners. Um, it's great that Tyler Eifert played every game last year. That has not happened consistently enough in his career for you to be able to say, fine there. Uh, we didn't see enough of Josh Oliver. You got to go get a young tight end, I believe. Don't know what the status is with the uh, Leonard Fournette, but I would think running back has to be on that list. Um, maybe an offensive lineman, an interior offensive lineman, a, a guy to build around for the future. That's a long list, but they have a lot of picks to go a get lot those of picks. guys. Yeah, just so. keep taking the just and, and quarterback too. <laughs> you got to find a young quarterback. 
Remember, this is team. Everyone goes, well, they can go and sign Cam Newton or Jameis Winston or Andy Dalton. Well, those guys cost real money. This team has about $18 million in salary cap room. And with 12 draft picks, most of that is going to go to your draft class, right? So it's not like they can go out there and just throw the big coin on the table and say, hey, uh, Cam Newton, come on in. Uh, if you're going with Gardner Minshew, you got to go find a young quarterback that you can use. There are some out there, the Fromm kid from Georgia, the Eason kid from Washington, whichever one they like best. I would think that's got to be somewhere near the top of their list in terms of need. Yeah, we'll, we'll see what happens in the uh, coming a uh, little bit left in the third round uh, right now. If the Jags jump back in there or just wait until tomorrow and then use the remaining picks, there are eight left for the Jacksonville Jaguars all coming up. And on the schedule tomorrow, team coverage continues. J.P. Shadrick, Brian Sexton, John Osier, Ashlyn Sullivan, presented by Pepsi and Papa John's after the Jaguars select Devon Hamilton from Ohio State. Earlier tonight, LaVisca Chenault, Colorado wide receiver. And that goes with, after a couple of defensive players in day one on Thursday. Chase on the defensive end linebacker. Uh, and, you know, what a setup that's going to be on defense for this Jaguars football team. C.J. Henderson coming in from Florida. We heard from uh, Dan Mullen earlier today on the pregame show and uh, talking a little bit just generally about C.J. Henderson. And we're talking about, obviously, the big picture look at the Jaguars draft class so far. Uh, Hender very confident that he's going to be able to step in and play right away and play at a high level in this league. Um, Chase on feels like, as we just mentioned, can step in and play against the run a little better than – um, some others, and then has that pass rush ability as well. He's a little thicker, which is a good a good start in day one. And then coming into the day, uh, the wide receiver, Keenan McCardell had one of the biggest smiles on his face as we've seen in a while, which was good. Uh, I think he would like another guy at some point on the list. We'll see if he gets that uh, coming up tomorrow. And then uh, back to the defensive line. Um, I, I guess the question now is, is this enough on defense to stop that run? Ashlyn, this is, this is a, a lot of guys to bring in on defense in, in one scenario here in the in this NFL draft, but it almost feels like that's that might be about enough right now. They got to get some other things going. Yeah, and I think a lot of times we forget about the free agency acquisition of linebacker Joe Schobert. These draft picks are great, but we remember what a huge deal that was bringing him in, and we know how much they need on offense. I mean, guys, we talked about it for months. We thought they were going to take offensive line at nine, and they still haven't addressed it. I mean, out of the combine, everyone's mocking an offensive line into the Jaguars in the first round. I'm pretty surprised it hasn't been addressed yet, so you got to think that's a priority going into tomorrow because, man, were we wrong. We all thought that was happening right. earlier. No doubt. Hey, uh, special treat here on Jaguars.com. Our live coverage presented by Pepsi and Papa John's. A live look at the media conference call. Let's take a listen. I'm able to get penetration. I'm able to create disruption in the backfield. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Mark. Now we'll go to you, D-Rock. Uh, what, what did Coach Marone and Dave Call will say when they called you about where they see or what they see your role is here? Um, they didn't really give me much. I mean, they just told me to ready, be ready to come down and try to contribute as much as possible. Now, your strength was – or you had a hard time getting on the field the first couple of years because there was so much talent on that front. So yes, did sir. you kind of feel like your last year was sort of desperation to really kind of make that impact so that you could show guys, you know what, I can play? Um, I mean, honestly, my last year wasn't even based on me going out there and trying to play for just the next level. It was more so just trying to play for my team at the time. Thank you. Thank mm -hmm. you, Mike. Now we'll go to Hayes with 1010XL. Congratulations. What did, uh, what did Larry Johnson mean to you? Uh, he means a lot to me. I mean, he's helped me from the day I got on campus to where I'm at right now, and he's really just pushed me and motivated me as, as much as possible to – be able to be at this point in my life and um, be as blessed as I am right now. What were the biggest strides that you made as a player from a technical standpoint under his tutelage? I'm just really knowing how the game of football works. I mean, being smart on and off the field and um, trying to improve on your skill set every single day. Great. Thank you. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you, Hayes. We'll go to John Reed with Florida Times Union. And after that, we'll go to Gene Fredette. 
How would you describe just the way this process has been for you and just um, how do you welcome coming to a team where there are some veterans and trying to catch on, obviously, but 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 trying to um, learn as much as you can, as quick as you can in this NFL game? How do you just feel about the adjustment of all that? Um, I, Honestly, all I can say is I'm just excited for it. I mean, be able to learn, be able to play in the NFL and just be – be able to contribute to my team. I mean, that's that's really all I got to say about it. <laughs> Congratulations, though. Thank you. Appreciate it. Thank you, John. We'll go to Gene Fournette, and after that, we'll go to Demetrius Harvey. Hey, Devon, yeah. congratulations. Uh, Marcel, uh, Marcel Darius, who was the nose tackle with the Jaguars, descri would describe his role for the Jaguars as – needing to bleep bleep things up and i'm just wondering i mean it's a very you know <laughs> provocative way of putting it but mm -hmm. is that how you essentially see your role that it's not a you know even if it's not about getting the tackle in the backfield it's about you know you causing know, some havoc up front, up front that you you create plays for other people um i mean i'm doing whatever it takes to I mean, whatever the team needs for me to do. I mean, honestly, I really could care less what uh, I was supposed to do just as long as I'm able to add value to that team. Thank you, Gene. Mm -hmm. we'll, go, we'll go to Demetrius now, and then after that, we'll go to Gary Smith. And as a reminder, if anyone else has any questions, just make sure to put it in the chat. Hey, Devon, uh, congratulations. Thank you. Uh, how much did you sort of meet with the Jaguars before the draft? And uh, and w what did they tell you ab about yourself? Like, what did they like about you and, and sort of where you fit on, on the defensive line? Uh, honestly, um, I think I probably talked to them probably twice as of the whole time. I was at both the Senior Bowl and the Combine. And, um, um, I mean, honestly, I'm, I'm just excited to be there. I mean – <laughs> like this has been a, a dream come true and I uh, can't wait to get to work. Did you have a feeling that, that they might, that they might take you? Did they tell you anything that would, that would give you that feeling? Um, Honestly, no. I mean, I didn't even <laughs> I get any inquiry, any, you know, any message or anything just kind of random, but I, I mean, I'm just glad to be here. All right. I appreciate it. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Demetrius. Um, and now we'll close with Gary Smith from Florida Times Union. Hey, Devon. Welcome to Jacksonville. Hey, how you doing? Pretty good. Uh, Devon, uh, they've mentioned this on, on the radio, and or, I'm sorry, on ESPN, and I saw the stat that a, a third of your total tackles have been for either losses or sacks. Do you have an <laughs> – have you always had a knack for kind of a, that kind of a big play for rising to the occasion, to having a, a sense of the moment, so to speak? Uh, I feel like I always have, but I mean, I've just tried to create as much disruption in the backfield as possible, even without the tackle or the sack or anything. I mean, that's just kind of my, my role. At, what, what was my role at Ohio State? And I, hopefully I can continue that in the league. Okay, thank you. Devon Hamilton, defensive tackle from the Ohio State University, coming to the Jacksonville Jaguars in the third round. Uh, a nice live listen there to the media conference over Zoom. Our thanks to the Jaguars PR and technology departments for the access there, certainly our broadcast crew as well. That'll do it for our coverage for now. Look for additional coverage, including behind-the-scenes access, available coming up a little later on Jaguars.com, and that includes John. These events as well. If they're done, we'll see. If Dave Caldwell jumps back in the round, then we'll come back live to you after that Jaguars pick. If not, we will see you tomorrow. Presented by Pepsi and Papa John's, this is instant reaction to the Jaguars draft pick in the third round.